makes me scared that he says that he's jealous because if he hinders her growth in moving on, I'm going to be super pissed. Like, I'm going to be very, very upset. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Allie. Today's topic of discussion is Exchange Season 2, Episode 15. With this series, I've been doing two episodes at a time, but at the end of Episode 15... <laughs> At the end of episode 15, I was shook. I was like, whoa, 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 hold your horses. And I had to summarize episode 15 before I moved on to episode 16 because I feel like the real juice is just brewing. Right now, episode 15, the juice was brewing and I have a really strong feeling that episode 16 is going to be hectic, chaotic, catastrophic, mayhem. And so I thought I needed to go one episode at a time to really, truly soak up the tea and the juice. Let's start off with Wanbin and Jisoo because honestly, I really thought they were going to be the only couple that didn't have feelings for each other, that was going to root each other on for dating others. And now uh, I truly empathize with both of them. Jisoo doesn't want to hurt Wanbin, but she has. Wanbin was trying to suppress his feelings for Jisoo this whole time and now it's just not working out for both of them. At the beginning of this episode, each male contestant going as a couple to Jeju had to buy a couple's gift for the female that they were going to Jeju with. Wanbin gets Jisoo a matching side bag as well as a diary and a fountain pen. After Jisoo receives the gifts, they head towards the airport in the cab. She says that she's too tired. She she plays the sleepy card. Ladies, you know this. You know the sleepy card when you don't really want to talk to your man in the car and you just fall asleep. They get to Jeju and Wambin is driving their car. Wambin is trying to get Jisoo in the mood and he starts asking her questions. But right away, I can tell that the topics that he's bringing up are from the past or he always brings up their past relationship and how they used to be and Jisoo is just not having any of it. They get to the restaurant and Wanbin begins to have a conversation with her, but he's bringing up the past again. He asks her if she's still hanging out with her old best friends from the past and she says, yeah, like I still hang out with them. And in her POV interview, it's very obvious that she is not comfortable with Wanbin continuously bringing up the past of when they were dating three years ago. She says that speaking to him is like opening Pandora's box. Some of the hosts were saying, okay, I can understand where she's coming from. It's like she doesn't know what he's going to say next. And at times it seemed like when Wanbin would speak, she kind of froze up and maybe she was worried about what he would bring up from the past. It's very obvious that Jisoo wants to draw a line and tell Wanbin that she is not the same person as who she was from three years ago and she wants him to stop comparing her and their relationship from before and the now. Jisoo tells Wanbin that on the first day, you said you didn't have feelings for me, so I stopped my feelings for you. And now it makes me feel uncomfortable that you're saying you're developing feelings for me. Honestly, when she said this, I felt super terrible for one bin, but I was really happy Jisoo could be honest to tell Wanbin how she truly feels. They get to their second destination, which looks like a cafe, I believe. I think they're just having some coffees. And Wanbin asks her if she feels uncomfortable with him being nice to her. And I, I am speechless because of how much I empathize with Wanbin. Of course, he's feeling hurt. And I feel bad for Jisoo as well because it's not her fault that she doesn't like Wanbin in a romantic way. And we already knew this as viewers and it didn't seem like she was trying to lead him on. She tells him that he always makes her out to be a villain and that she doesn't want to be in that place anymore. And she tells him that she doesn't want to hurt him. And that's why she has told him that she feels uncomfortable with him giving her romantic feelings. Wambin starts to cry. And when he starts to cry, it just reminds me of 
their first night when they had the introduction letters when Jisoo said something on, along the lines of she got frustrated because he would always cry before her so then she feels like she couldn't really explain her feelings but Wanbin is such a sensitive guy like we can't blame him for feeling hurt and just being in his feels and crying so he tells Jisoo that she should have told him earlier about her feelings but honestly I don't think there's ever a right time to reject someone would have been really bad timing if Jisoo had told him this maybe two days before the finale I don't know that would be very very inconvenient if she told him two days before the finale if you know what I'm referencing, you know what I'm referencing. I think Jisoo told him at a pretty good time. She's telling him when it looks like he is really showing her feelings of intimacy. I mean, in the past, it didn't really seem like Wanbin was interested in Jisoo up until this point. After they go back and forth about sharing how disappointed and how upset they are, Wanbin says, you know, I spent a lot of time finding these gifts for you and to hear that it makes you uncomfortable, it makes me really disappointed. And Jisoo kind of like puts her foot down and she says, you know, we're both really frustrated and I didn't know you would like me again. And hearing that you do like me makes me feel uncomfortable. But we could have resolved this a lot quicker. But because you couldn't get over it, it kind of ruined my time here in Jeju. It's my first time here. And <clears throat> she's upset that he couldn't get over his feelings a lot quicker. I can understand that Jisoo is very frustrated that even though she doesn't want to hurt him, she ends up hurting him when she thinks that she's doing the right thing and I can also empathize with Wanbin falling in love with Jisoo again and being disappointed and being hurt again. In Wanbin's POV interview he says that he ha hasn't fully moved on but he didn't want the others or Jisoo to know that he had still been hung up on her. And so this is what makes me sad because it seemed like he didn't want to be truly honest with how he was feeling to avoid being hurt. And now our boy Wanbin is hurt again. I truly hope that in episode 16, they can both move on and date others in the house. But I don't know. I think they're just both going to end up being alone. Jian, Heian, and Gyumin were not chosen as a couple or they weren't chosen by the people that they had wanted to get picked by. They go to Jeju together. Jian has now figured out that Hidu's ex is Nayan and Heian and Gyumin are exes as well. And I just thought it was really interesting about the assumptions that we have about people and how it creates a bias in our minds because Jian and Heian, mm, they could have been really good friends. Honestly, I don't know actually. Their vibe just seems really different. So maybe they wouldn't have become really great friends, but maybe Jian's <clears throat> attitude towards Heian would have been differently if she didn't think that Heian was dating or had dated Hidu this whole time. At first, I was really happy that Jian was a part of Gyumin and Heian's group because she seemed very playful, she was very talkative, and I thought it was great up until the point where it did kind of seem like Jian was leaving Heian out. I mean, especially during the vlogs, it looked like Jian was being more playful and active with Gyumin rather than including Heian. I mean, even in the plane, it just looked really sad. It looked like Heian was being kind of an outcast and I felt that it was because Jian was more focused on making Yumin feel comfortable. They get to Jeju Island and Heian quickly calls a shotgun and sits beside Yumin. Jian gets the backseat and she asks them straight up 
if they are exes and even the hosts were thinking okay <laughs> is this allowed is she allowed to be asking this question i felt bad about how uncomfortable Hayun and Kumin felt in Hayun's interview she says maybe it's because i called shotgun too quickly maybe i looked too comfortable wanting to sit beside Kumin and then in Jion's interview she says when i stopped talking they didn't talk it was shocking. I've never been on a ridiculous trip like that. And when she says that, I'm thinking, okay, girl, like chill out. You honestly, you're so absurd. You just asked them if they were exes. Obviously, they're caught off guard. I mean, I don't want to judge Jion for being pushy and trying to make them speak. Maybe she felt uncomfortable because they weren't speaking unless she spoke. So maybe she felt the burden to continuously create a conversation. But I didn't like how upset she was being when she didn't get the outcome that she wanted. She, she seemed kind of bratty to me at that point. They get to the sashimi restaurant. Jian goes to the washroom. Kyuman and Heian are talking about the past. And this kind of seemed like maybe one of the only few times where they had a positive conversation that was like natural and it seemed like they were both okay with it Gion comes back and she tells them that they have similar facial features like they look like each other and I kept thinking like girl for the longest time you thought Hyun and Hidu were together and now she's pushing it so hard that they look so much alike and that they are absolutely each other's exes. Just her attitude towards that group date, it really put me off. Let's talk about Gyu Min, Hyun, and Hyun Gyu, who is the new participant because I, uh, I was speechless. I was like, what? Okay, I'm I'm going too much ahead of myself. Throughout this episode, we see that Kyumin has been speaking in his POVs kind of like positively about Hyun in Jeju Island. It was maybe one of the first times that they had a positive conversation where Kyumin was not pushing her away or not drawing a line to make her stop talking about the past it seemed like he was okay with talking to her about what they used to have anyways during his povs he says things like when Hyun and i were broken up i went to nice places with my friends and i thought about Hyun during those times because we never went to those places or when she was eating sashimi and his POV, he said, you know, I didn't even know that she liked sashimi this much because when we were together, we just didn't have sashimi all the time. And so I had no idea that was her favorite food. And so it seemed like now Gyumin is maybe all about Hei Un. I don't know. It was it kind of caught me off guard. Maybe maybe i didn't describe that correctly maybe it's not like he's all about Hayun, but it seems like the thought of Hayun is now in his mind and it kind of freaks me out it i'm not gonna lie it kind of freaks me out human i i kind of liked it better when he was pushing her away more actively compared to him being kind to her is that weird i don't know because in his interviews he says that he's pushing her away because he doesn't want to sway her which makes sense like that's what i've been seeing throughout the season and when he's being nice to her or when he's having conversations with her or when he says things about their past or talks about when they were together it kind of freaks me out because i really don't want him to sway her after all the exes have been revealed to everyone except for Park Naons, we see that her ex enters the chat room and his name is Hyun Gyu. Honestly, I did not love his first haircut. I think they could have 
done a little bit better because in his POVs, his interview, his hair looks great. His hair is styled beautifully. But why was his hair styled the way that it was? Like, why was it styled like that the first time he met everyone? Okay, also, another one of my complaints is when he had entered, why was everyone on one side of the couch? Why was everyone on one side of the couch? Is that what the producer had demanded? But I, I was happy that, I don't know who it was, but they realized, hey, like we're all on one side, like let's all spread out. And then they ended up sitting with Hyun Yu, which made me really happy because the anxiety levels that I had for him, I was like, ooh, I wouldn't want to be in the same situation that he was in because he is a newcomer. And then now everyone's on the other side of the couch and then he has a bad haircut not a good mix. The hosts were also mentioning that he looks so much like Park Nyon and <clears throat> I couldn't agree more. Like what the heck? They actually looked like siblings. Like how the heck could two strangers look so much alike? Hyun Gyu is a 25 year old college student and he is given the opportunity to choose a woman to go on a date with tomorrow. And when I tell you, see, now I'm getting really excited and I, I don't want to be too excited, but I'm super excited. <laughs> when I tell you how it's getting hot, guys, how excited I was when the hosts were getting so hyped up that he had chosen Hey Un. And when he chooses Hey Un, I'm like, I was speechless. I was like, yes, I was speechless. And then I was jumping and I'm like, yes, in your face, human. I love a villain, but it's times like this that I get so excited, like way too excited. Hey, Un and her POV, she says that she felt like she could go did you see that? To Gyumin. And I felt the exact same way. And then you know what really upsets me? And I'm going to try not to be like a psycho crazy person. But in Gyumin's interview, he said that he became jealous. Are you freaking kidding me? He says that he became jealous. And and I'm kind of happy because I'm like, ooh, like you had your chance to get back with her and now she doesn't want, well, I don't know. I don't know if she doesn't want him anymore. <laughs> but I was really glad that she is a desirable woman and Gyuman saw that for himself. But it makes me, it makes me scared. It makes me scared that he says that he's jealous because if he hinders her growth in moving on, I'm going to be super pissed. Like I'm going to be very, very upset. And this is a reason, this is the reason why I did not continue to watch episode 16 and wait to film two episodes at a time because when Gyuman said that he was jealous... That means episode 16 is going to be mayhem. Crazy, crazy wild. If Gyuman starts acting up and he starts trying to reel Hyun back in, I'm going to love it and I'm going to hate it so much. Oh, like I feel so excited. At some point, I do believe that he doesn't want to lead Hyun on because of his feelings for Nayan. I truly believe that Gyuman wants to move on with Nayan. And so far his actions have shown me this, especially when he tries to avoid saying the whole envelope that he can go or that you can choose your ex to go to Jeju Island with. When he does these kind of like calculated things so that Heian doesn't choose him, I do believe that he doesn't want to lead her on and that he wants to move on and he wants her to move on. I really like how active Hyun Gyu is in pursuing Hae Eun. So while they were all around the couch just drinking, he calls Hae Eun over to have a drink and she moves to his side, which I thought was great. I just hope that in episode 16, Hyun Gyu can really just just go for her and she can change her mind and who knows? Who knows? Maybe they'll end up together. I don't know. 
I don't know. Anyway, those are all my thoughts for episode 15. There is a video here, here, subscribe over here, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.